Radio is a medium that has informed, entertained and educated the world for over a century. Each year on the 13th of February, broadcasters, producers and consumers of the medium celebrate the importance and impact of the medium. But uh, the growth and prevalence of the digital space uh, does, you know, it begs the question of radio, does it still have the punch it used to have? Bahai Tudumelang, good evening. My name is Tambo Mulukwani. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we unpack the role and purpose of radio in this increasingly digital age. We start the conversation with uh, Talana FM station manager Jonathan Griffiths, who's also, you know, boasts the title of the youngest station manager in Mzansi. He joins us in studio this evening. Jonathan, much appreciated for coming. Good evening, Tabo. Thank you so much for having me and uh, good evening to all the radio fanatics out there. Much appreciated for making the time. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm very much interested. We know that you are the youngest station manager in the country yeah. at the moment. Let's start up, uh, you know, where it all began and uh, also how you got to, you know, become the youngest station manager yeah. of uh, Delana FM. Beautiful question, man. So it all started with my love for touching people to the power of public speaking. Uh, so based on my religious beliefs, when I grew up, I grew up going from door to door and sharing Bible truths with people and seeing how that information and just the art of public speaking, preparing to give a speech and seeing how it touches people made me fall in love with public speaking itself. But then, of course, I had to realize how I can channel it, channel it into a career and it was either television yeah. or radio. So that's how I fell in love with the radio. Mm. I mean, people outside may ask, uh, what does it entail? you know, or to become a station manager. Maybe you can just uh, talk to us about the work itself. What <laughs> does a station manager do? <laughs> well, the youngest radio station manager would say you always have to put in twice the work. Uh, but I always plan the operation around three Ps. So it's place, production and people. So place is where we're going to be broadcasting that day. Production is all the technical aspects of the radio station. And then people, it's the presenters and the guests that we're going to be having for that day. So those are like the three main aspects um, that produce our operations for the day. And of course, meetings, you know, as the station manager, you also need to manage the business side of the radio station. You need to make sure it progresses financially. So that's a typical day in my life as the youngest radio station manager. Mm. I mean, you know, over time we've seen um, a lot of changes, yeah. you know, uh, you're seeing the introduction of Twitter spaces, <laughs> the introduction of podcasts, you yeah. know, throughout uh, the country, people are just, you know, formulating different content yeah. uh, through those spaces. Uh, how impactful is that, especially right. to a medium that you work in? All right. First of all, I was just reading an article earlier on this morning, and I saw that uh, on a daily basis, just in South Africa, over 15 million people listen to radio on a daily basis. Now, when we look back to when radio started in the 1800s, by the time television was introduced into the picture, many people thought that, okay, it's done with radio. But still, radio was able to thrive concurrently with television. So that just shows us that radio is a powerful platform. The only suggestion would be for any radio station, specifically a community radio station, is to work hand in hand with social media. For example, it's so beautiful now that people can be able to consume your content on air and at the same time go and watch the show on social media. See who is the one speaking behind the mic, see the guest. And that also adds uh, to the impact that we bring to advertisers because we're not only advertising their brand on air, but also on our social media platforms. So radio is not going anywhere and it's not jeopardized by any other online platform like a podcast or social media. All radio needs to do is work hand in hand. Mm. I mean, speaking about radio, I'm interested also in going back to the name of your radio station. I yeah. mean, Talana FM. Uh, you know, I, I want to. What language is that? Is it um, in Zulu or um, in Setswana? Because we have the word Talana in yeah. in Setswana, and also maybe the significance of also the name resonating with the communities. Yeah. So first of all, it does have a significant African meaning, but in Zulu, it's basically with referred to the shelf where the chieftain would keep all his valuable resources. 
So I believe that the radio station, being a community radio station in Dundee, it keeps all the valuable content of the community, hence why I call it Talane FM. And we're trying our best to live by that, specifically as the most youthful radio station in the country, led by one of the youngest programs managers, also led by one of the youngest radio station managers. We're trying to make sure that the youth in and around Dundee are getting the opportunity to be trained on how to do radio professionally with the right motives, with the right work ethics, because that's also another way that we can preserve the medium of radio is by training young people. So that's basically what we're endeavoring. And I, I think it correlates very well with our name, Talana FM, yeah. producing and bringing out the valuable content of our community, Dundee. I mean, obviously, the uh, playing field is not leveled when yeah. it comes to advertising and stuff. Uh, how difficult is it? for you as a community medium, uh, you know, to navigate the spaces. I mean, uh, all of us, we are coming from uh, community radio stations yep. before we can work for commercials and PBS, you know. Uh, how difficult is it yeah. for community radio stations to thrive? Because obviously, somehow, somehow, you need to create some sort of revenue for the station. To be honest, it's very difficult. But I'm not going to say I mastered the way out. Yeah. But what I've noticed, many community radio stations completely rely on funding as their way or as their crucial way of generating revenue. With my radio station, we started off with very basic equipment, but I was very big on offering a service. So whenever I approached an institution, whether it's a governmental institution, I would never start off by saying, hey, look, we need funding. Just save the day, sponsor us. I would say, hey, listen, we'll render a service. We're going to advertise. We may have 1,000 listeners, but we're going to advertise. Your product, your services are going to reach those people. So in that way, we were able to grow from strength to strength because institutions, especially governmental institutions, were more interested in working with us, provincial governmental yeah. institutions were more interested in working with us because we didn't just approach them for funding. But it was a trade exchange. We offered a service and we got paid for it. So that is one uh, methodical way I think many community radio stations can start implementing. Don't just approach for funding. Offer a service and then get paid for it. Just lastly, we are celebrating uh, World Radio Day. Uh, what is it that uh, you, know, you can say to uh, the consumers of uh, uh, radio as a medium? Uh, yeah. I mean, people now are on... Uh, you know, their fingertips, they're always uh, just uh, looking at things on the net. Yeah. Uh, maybe just listening to podcasts, as I said e earlier on, and you said that, look, radio is not going anywhere yeah. because, I mean, it has thrived over a century yeah. now. What would be your message, uh, you know, as the youngest yeah. uh, station manager? I think, I think for me, it's quite an emotional question because I just think back to when I was this, a young boy on the farm and the only thing that I could have access to in terms of inf information, education and entertainment, the only medium I had access to was radio. And so I fell in love with it. And I think that is something that maybe you can also relate to. The personal attachment that we yeah. have with radio. Uh, television does play its role, print media does play its role, but radio has a very personal attachment. And so just remembering that will help us to continue preserving this medium. And of course, I think there's so many touching moments that have happened on radio that just show us that radio will forever be a necessity to be able to reach out to people, especially in South Africa, where we have rural areas where people are completely dependent on receiving information, yeah. crucial information. That means their life, their health via this medium. Uh, so let's, let's all work together. As radio fanatics, I just like to address the radio fanatics. Uh, continue promoting this medium. It's here to stay. Jonathan, much appreciated for coming. Unfortunately, we've ran out of time, but uh, thank you very much for making the time. It's an honor and privilege. Thank you so much. That was uh, Jonathan Griffiths, who's the station manager at the Rising Community Station in KwaZulu-Natal, Talana FM, giving us his insights on radio and specifically community radio. We're going to take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back, you're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Before the ad break, we started the conversation by getting a better understanding of the role of a station manager, as well as understanding the state of community radio at present. 
Now we shift gears to a crucial, you know, but often misunderstood part of the medium, which is content uh, production. Now joining us in studio is Kamu Moth, a content producer at 947. She's here with me in studio this evening. Kamu, much appreciated for coming. Hi, Tabo, how are you? I'm so excited, you know, when... And I know they probably told you that content producers don't have personality. Go with the Gnan personality. Born, okay, you are right here. But, uh, you know, let's start the conversation. What does a content producer do? Because then, you know, often people that are in the background and in, mm. for us that are coming out there on camera, on radio, we shine because of content producers. Maybe you can just explain it for our viewers. Um, I like the fact that you understand that presenters and the show in general shines because of the content producer. Yeah. I always say the work of a content producer is like the bottom of the barrel, you know, because you have to be the early riser. You have to be there before everybody else. You are basically the coach, the mentor, uh, the technical guy yeah. and an and all encompassing human. And so what you do is from scripting to guests to interviews to making sure your presenter is nah, you know? And I think a lot of times um, people neglect the human aspect of content production, which is the most important because I can come up with the best content in the world, yeah. the best features, the best gimmicks. But if there is no relationship and mutual respect and a synergy between you and your presenter, you as good as basically the worst show ever on the planet. <laughs> I mean, now we're seeing social media taking over. I mean, everything is online now. Radio Yes still lives, you know, a century after that. Uh, but, you know, I want to talk about the importance of um, social media, the role that it plays. Looking at the Gen Zs, everyone is literally sitting on their phones, on their tablets, you know, doing all these kind of things. And you see now people are consuming whatever that is online. How important is that evolution to the space especially you know as we are now uh the digital age is is, is the four are you know is really really on another show, level yeah. if i may put it that way how important is that you know it, the introduction of social media and in making it work for the content that you will be producing um you know with the introduction of technology in general yeah. i think the biggest role that it's played in our platform is amplification you know because uh, first of all radio is it has the longest history yeah. and one of the strongest presence in media and that's never going to change for various reasons obviously cost effectiveness yeah. mass reach you know and the fact that it gives listeners freedom despite their religion their creed their gender and so forth but what the digital space has done is it's allowed us to take whatever we couldn't deliver on an audio basis and then package it nicely for you in a way that you can consume on the go yeah. you know because not i mean everybody has to go everybody has to make money the beat is here now and so digital has breached the gap because people don't sit for long hours anymore but i can always catch up you know, there's like that thing where we can catch up on television. I think digital has afforded us the ability not just to amplify, but to catch up. You know, so that's a very important uh, role in terms of, you know, just going beyond borders. The yeah. borders are no longer just, you know, from Botswana to Bloemfontein to Joburg. It's become international. You know, a person in the States can see via Instagram yeah. what 947 is doing, what YFM is doing. Um, so I think that's that's one of the greatest advantages that digital has offered us. Mm. I mean, you have a unique perspective of having experience, you know, as a content producer for both traditional radio as well as online radio. Uh, maybe can you tell us the difference and similarities? I think the major difference really is real time, real time interaction, uh, especially if you pride yourself in always doing the best job. Whether you're online or you are on traditional um, media, yeah. if you pride yourself in good work, you're gonna give the best content, the best features, the best experience, irrespective of the platform. However, the response yeah. I've found is always the difference. You know, I now have the luxury to get a caller right now. You know, there's less pre-packaging, so it gives like a almost a rush through your yeah. veins because everything Let's is like go. live TV. It's yeah. like, hey, go big or go Let's home. Move, yeah. Let's go mm. you know? And I think that's, that's part of being creative. And um, a lot of pre-records sort of lose the pulse. And for me, online doesn't have the pulse. Whereas uh, traditional 
is oh, it's like a ticking no. bomb, you know. I mean, <laughs> hopefully the explosion is great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, speaking of online, I was about to ask you why. I mean, from your own perspective, why is not online picking up? Uh, you know, it's really not doing well. They've tried a lot of people. Uh, you know, something is not working out within the online platform, especially when you look at online radio mm. uh, and stuff. What seems to be the problem? Affordability. Uh, the reality is we are in South Africa. Data is extremely expensive, but apart from data being expensive, um, the average man, the average consumer cannot afford to sacrifice Wi-Fi so that they can tune in to me versus to buy maize meal for the kids. And unless um, they're going to, you know, <laughs> give us data for free, <laughs> we're going to keep bumping into yeah. this, this problem. Um, or unless they come up with more jobs. But the reality is, you know, our people cannot afford online radio. And like I said before, radio from a cost point of view is less costing. It's even less costing than having a television yeah. and print media. Mm. You don't pay anything to listen to radio except the electricity that's plugged in, which you don't really have much of these days, but hey. I mean, it's, 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 it's really, really, really difficult, as you're saying there. But, you know, just before uh, I let you go, I, I, I want to understand from you now. I mean, you've said it, that, look, radio has been there for, for years now and stuff. How do you paint the future of radio in the next 10 years from now on? Content-wise, uh, you know, talent identification, uh, even the, the the type of radio stations that are mushrooming also mm -hmm. in the country. I mean, the future of radio, I think, is a bright one, like any other medium. Um, the point of evolution is to always get better than the, the, the mentor. The mentee always becomes better. And so um, I think we have an influx of great personalities for radio and television. Um, I've had a chance to consume a lot of it because it's part of being a content producer, yeah. knowing what's trending, knowing what's coming up. You know, um, I, I, I might think we might hit a snag in terms of the quality of content that we produce because I do find that a lot of uh, content producers are starting to rely on uh, X yeah. for their content. You know, um, I think we do have great presenters that are coming up, but I don't think we have great producers that are coming up. I think they might be great, but the creativity might be stunted by what we now have access to. And we're sort of like molding a lazier type of producer because I think a lot of times people panic and think because X seems to be very talkable yeah. among circles that that's what you need to do to give the best to people, to keep people intrigued. And I, I don't think that's a true reflection of what radio is. It's always been about informing the people and it's still the most reliable source of information, news and entertainment. In 30 seconds before I let you go, the significance of Radio Day, how important is it, especially for those that are still trying to get in? Mm. Um, days like this really is, is to remind us that the work that was didn't just happen for nothing. Um, it's there to, to show you the growth of where we come from. I mean, this was one of the first platforms how people got um, information related to them and for it to still exist uh, just shows, it also speaks a lot to, to the greatness of humans that we've been able to make it better from what it initially was. And it says to a person, though you're where you are now, just as radio has grown, so will you. In your dreams, in your aspirations, all you got to do is put in the work. And such days are just uh, 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 an it, 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 it just reiterates, you know, um, like I said, the evolution of humanness and its greatness. Mm -hmm. And don't give up, ever. Come on, Moth. I mean, we are radio people. We, I mean, we need an hour to finish this. We but do. <laughs> much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you so much for having me. That was a content producer at 947 Kamumoth sharing her knowledge with us about radio as we observe World Radio Day. We're going to park it here for now. Let's take a quick ad break. We're coming back after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. My name is Tabo Molokwani. Well, we are still in conversation on uh, World Radio Day. Uh, let me bring in my guest uh, for this evening now, joining us in studio via Zoom. That's uh, uh, radio personality, TV and media entrepreneur, uh, Penny Libiani, to give us perspective 
as a broadcaster, you know, who has a front row seat to the evolution of radio. She's joining us via Zoom. Uh, Penny, much appreciated for joining us uh, this evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much uh, for having me. Apologies that I couldn't join you guys in studio, but let's see if technology, uh, you know, which is what radio really is all about, uh, you know, can get this conversation going. Much appreciated. I mean, uh, you know, as long as you've arrived via Zoom, then that's perfect for us. I mean, uh, uh, you know, you've been in the industry for, um, I mean, a lot of times. Uh, you've went to different radio stations, you've done TV, I mean, you've done radio stations in different languages. Maybe let's talk about uh, how you have managed to stay relevant to this day. I think, uh, you know, from getting on radio from day one, uh, studying on Voice of Soweto community radio station, uh, which, became, which became part of um, what is today called Soweto Community Radio, um, it taught me that um, being on any media platform is about the community, which is your audience. Um, and uh, from day one, uh, that sort of like gave me a training, gave me a training ground of being interested in the people, being interested in their issues, uh, you know, being a catalyst and giving them a voice. So whatever platform I've been on, and the reason why I'm still here today is because I am just a conduit. Um, I'm just a catalyst for conversation. I love uh, South African people. I love South African stories. I love uplifting communities. I love giving them a voice. And what a better way to give communities a voice than radio. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, as you are saying that, uh, look, we, we, you've started from way back from the voice of So Way To There. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in finding out what are some of the key learnings uh, that you've taken away from those experiences and also you know what uh, do you think are some of the key conversations uh, we should be having around radio i think the key learnings is that uh, you know as technology evolve uh, in a country like ours which is you know a developmental state you know yes we are a post-democracy and some of us who live in urban areas who have access to social media platforms and the internet we think that's actually how the rest of the country access accesses information but in reality radio is still one of the biggest mediums in our country and that's how people actually have access to information they access information from news they access information on um you know other um, um social issues you know whether it's about uh, housing whether it's about uh, raising children uh, whether it's about government opportunities so radio still plays that big role and I think the conversations that we should be currently having, um, one is how to fight crime, uh, you know, as communities, to overarch that, not just to fight crime, but to 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 do things for ourselves, um, and that speaks to like um, social activism and, and 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 active citizenship in our communities. So those are the kind of things that I think. Um, South Africans have forgotten how to stand up for themselves. They've forgotten mm -hmm. how to do things for themselves, uh, you know, and, and we've become so self-reliant, whether it's, uh, you know, government is probably our favorite thing to say, the government must, uh, you know. And the question is, you know, what are we doing in this community to, whether it's fighting crime, what are we doing in this community to uh, uplift young people? What are we doing, you know what I mean? So, so I think uh, active citizenship is one of the conversations we need to be having. Mm. I mean, Penny, let's talk uh, traditional radio versus online or digital radio in the country. How do each of them fare right now? And uh, do we realistically have a chance of, you know, moving into strictly online digital radio as a country? Because now we are seeing quite a lot of things, uh, you know, platforms, mushrooming, the podcasts, we've been talking about them, the Twitter spaces. How do you think uh, um, they are faring? Uh, at this point and uh, is there a point that we will be able to move to strictly online and digital I don't I don't think that's something that's going to be happening here now today um, and, and you know radio is part of uh, information technology reality of access it's about access uh, you know to the internet it's about um, you know affordability of the internet so like I say majority of us who live in urban areas who have access to data uh, we think that everybody should move to how we we listen to radio like now you can download the app and listen to it on your phone uh, and then you bluetooth it to play it in your car you don't need to switch on analog uh, whereas people in the rest of the country who still need to 
put on a small wireless, uh, you know, on the corner of their house. If they plug it, they plug it. If they charge it by batteries, they do. So it has to do with that development. It also has to do, uh, you know, uh, which it has to do with that development, which technology and, and ICT access, access in terms of the internet um, is the reality of it. Until we have access to, to Wi-Fi across, you know, villages and even some parts of the township, you know, mm. those of us living in Gauteng, uh, you know, we, I'm talking to Soweto TV viewers. There's people in parts of Soweto who don't have access to, uh, you know, to this technology that we're talking about. So radio will always be that medium, uh, but we can exist in, in a, in a duality, you know, situation where we're able to um, access radio digitally, but at the same time, we're able to consume it in traditional ways. So, and I don't think there's anything wrong with having the best of both worlds. Why not? Mm. Just lastly, Penyu, before I uh, let you go, I, I mean, what do you make of the current state of radio in the country? I mean, you've spoken about it, that look, we've come a long way as a country, as a country that is also developing. Where and how do you think improvements in the industry can be made, you know, be it uh, talent identification or even uh, content wise? Um, I think that the first pool, the first part of like talent identification, I think, um, you know, they kind of like need to, to, to use a system that supposedly works in, for example, national teams. You know, you got to look in the junior teams. Uh, you know, you got to look for the best in the junior Penny Libyan, I'm not sure if uh, you can still hear me. Uh, my guest tonight is Penny Libyan, a radio and TV presenter and media entrepreneur, sharing her insights on radio in South Africa. I was looking forward uh, to, uh, you know, that input, you know, talking about talent identification and also talking more about uh, how we can improve uh, radio looking at the issue of content wise but let me thank uh, my earlier guests uh, for joining us as well as 947 content producer Kamu Moth as well as station manager at Delana FM Jonathan Griffiths uh, for joining us uh, this evening uh, talking about uh, World Radio Day that's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today remember we love hearing from you so please feel free to talk to us about this episode Send us an email, it's Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. You can simply just call us or WhatsApp us at 081-531-8857. From myself, Tabo Malukwani, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the latest news update with Mas Chama Kobola coming up next.